In this Well Long Fallen Dynasty build guide, I'm going to show you how to play as a Stealth Assassin. This build is focused around the Water Virtue stat and uses the Chivalrous Swordsman Dual Swords weapon in combination with the Liberation Guo set to assassinate enemies in a single blow. This build is ideal for players who enjoy a stealthy playstyle relying on map navigation and positioning to dispatch enemies with a single devastating blow. To perform a successful sneak attack, it's crucial to remain undetected as you approach your target from behind. Once you position yourself correctly, wait for the circle to turn red and press the heavy attack button to execute a sneak attack. The general strategy with this build is to use the Alacrity Haste spell in combination with the Unsealable Form spell to safely navigate the battlefield without being noticed. We'll also buff ourselves with the Amplify Damage spell and Ice Weapon to further increase our damage. This build can be used all throughout the whole campaign, but for the purposes of this video, we'll cap our stats at 70 to give you some idea what they would look like around this level. The build is mainly designed around the Water Virtue, but we'll also assign some points into Fire and Wood as well. While you are leveling up, you should prioritize Water first, going for Fire to unlock Amplify Damage second, and the Wood Virtue last. Assuming you are level 70, allocate the stats in the following manner. 11 Wood Virtue. This increases the time our buffs last, allowing us to keep Alacrity Haste and Unsealable Form up for longer. It will also allow you to use Inner Breath spell during boss fights. 8 Fire Virtue. This is required to unlock the Amplify Damage spell. Our weapon scales with fire as well, so you'll also get a damage boost. 51 Water Virtue. This is our main stat. It'll greatly increase our weapon damage and increase stealth, which affects the damage dealt with fatal strikes to unaware enemies, as well as determining how easily enemies can detect you. You often start missions with zero morale, meaning you won't be able to use your spells right away. You can still walk behind enemies and perform fatal strikes to start building up your morale. Another great strategy is dropping from a high position, which will guarantee a fatal strike on the enemy. Two great ways of building up morale are consuming elixir and interacting with vengeance swords. Make sure to start using your spells as soon as they become available and always take one enemy at a time if possible. Taking a look at the spells that we use for this build first is Alacrity Haste. This spell increases your movement speed for a certain period of time. This is particularly useful because you need to walk to sneak behind an enemy without being noticed. If you run, they'll get alerted. Alacrity Haste allows you to quickly walk behind a target performing the fatal strike, which is great for patrolling enemies. Amplify Damage. This spell increases both the damage you deal to enemies and the damage you receive for them for a period of time. This is used to greatly increase the damage of our Fatal Strike. Since we're attacking from behind, we're not supposed to get hit by enemies, so there's no need to worry about the extra incoming damage. Ice Weapon. This spell enchants your current melee weapon with ice for a certain period of time. This helps us deal elemental damage that can go through Gar. This is very useful to deal with enemies who got alerted when, for example, you killed another nearby enemy. And lastly, we come to Unsealable Form. This spell turns your body invisible for a certain period of time, making you undetectable by enemies. This can be used to move in front of enemies without being detected even in very small places. There are a couple of things to consider, however, when using this spell. First, this spell doesn't mitigate sound, so you want to use it in combination with Alacrity Haste to be able to quickly walk to your destination. Second, enemies will notice you if you touch them, so keep a minimum distance when sneaking behind them. Third, your spirit gauge does not recover while this buff lasts, so if somehow an enemy detects you and you get hit, you will be stunned because of your spirit gauge. Fourth, you can jump while invisible, but if you double jump, the buff will go away, exposing you to enemies. And last, you can't become invisible while in combat, even if you are out of sight. While this build is mainly designed to complete mission levels, you can also adjust it to fight against bosses. In order to do this, you'll need to swap a couple of spells. You'll want to swap Alacrity Haste for Inner Breath. This spell increases the accumulation of the Divine Beast gauge for a certain period of time. This allows you to quickly fill the Divine Beast bar during boss fights. And you'll also want to swap Unsealable Form for Aqua Blink. This spell instantly teleports you in the direction you are holding, allowing you to get behind the boss or to avoid a critical blow. While fighting bosses, you'll want to focus on deflecting their attacks. This build is very squishy, but the Water Virtue makes it easier to deflect attacks and reduces the amount of spirit you consume while doing so. Use the Aqua Blink spell to get away of difficult situations or to close the gap to land a couple of hits. Once you Spirit Break the boss, make sure to activate the Amplify Damage spell and the Ice Weapon spell before landing your Fatal Strike. You usually have enough time to activate both of these before the boss recovers. Once you land the Fatal Strike, the set bonus debuffs will activate, greatly reducing the damage the boss deals and greatly increasing your own damage. If you are aggressive enough, you should be able to Spirit Break the boss again before the buffs go away, thus repeating the sequence. You'll want to use Baize as your Divine Beast for this build, and you can acquire him fairly early on to the game. Its Divine Beast favor increases our Fatal Strike damage, which is perfect for this build. He'll also reduce the amount of Spirit required to cast your Water Phase spells, and reduce the amount of Spirit consumed while deflecting, which is very useful during boss fights. 
While exploring the mission, you can use your Divine Beast's summon ability to mark all enemies in a wide area. They'll be marked by a light blue sigil and you'll be able to see them even through walls. This is very useful when you need to deal with enemies that are hidden from sight or to plan your move in locations with many enemies. The Beast Resonation is very useful at the beginning of a boss fight before you're able to land your first Fail Strike as it'll reduce the amount of damage you take and imbue your weapon with ice damage, which will help you deplete the enemy spirit gauge without giving it an opportunity to recover. Next, we'll talk about the equipment we use in this build, starting with weapons first. Our primary melee weapon is the Chivalrous Swordsman Dual Swords. The Chivalrous Swordsman Dual Sword scales with the Water Virtue stat. In addition, it has a fixed special effect that increases its damage in proportion to the armor lightness you are currently wearing. The combination of both scaling factors provides the weapon with an insane amount of attack power, making it perfect for our build. Our backup weapon is the Night Owl Cane, and this weapon is part of the Strategist of Genius set, and you need to have it equipped in order to gain the full bonuses of this set, which is why we have it here. When it comes to the special effects you'll want to have on your primary melee weapon or your melee weapons, you'll want to have Spell Duration to further increase the length of Alacrity Haste in unsealable form, and you can also add Ice Attack Power to increase the damage of your Ice Weapon and Divine Beast Resonation. When it comes to your ranged weapons, your primary should be the Feathered Cavalry Bow. This bow has max scaling with the Water Virtue stat even from a very low level, allowing you to deal an insane amount of damage from a distance. This is very useful to deal with enemies that might be out of reach or that could notice you if you defeat another enemy. You can use any ranged weapon you want for your secondary ranged weapon. When it comes to ranged weapon special effects, you'll want to have enemy detection to be able to see enemies on the minimap and plan your strategy. You can also get this from one of your accessories if you don't have it on your weapon. You may also want to have flag detection to make sure you don't miss any flags. After those two are covered, you'll want to focus on morale rank points gained first to be able to start using your spells as soon as possible, and after that you can go for damage dealt and ice attack power to further increase your damage. When it comes to armor, we'll be using the Liberation Guo set, and it's one of the lightest sets in the game, creating a perfect synergy with our weapon. In addition, the set bonuses will further increase the power of our Fatal Strike, allowing us to deal with enemies that we can't defeat in a single blow. You can acquire all pieces of the set by increasing your relationship with Guo Jia to Sworn Brother. This can be easily done by providing him with enough cups of cordiality or by joining forces with him in multiple missions. When it comes to the bonuses you want on your armor, you want to focus on morale rank points gained first, then go for water damage, ice attack power, and chill accumulation on enemies. When it comes to accessories, you'll minimally need the Silver Inlay Liovo Dice. This is required as part of the Liberation Guo set, so you'll need to acquire it to complete that set bonus. You can use anything you want for your secondary, accessory, looking for things that increase Fatal Strike damage, water damage, ice attack power, etc. Final Tips Be aware of your surroundings. Since this build focuses on stealth, always be aware of your surroundings and train to plan your approach on enemies. Experiment with other spells. While the spells mentioned in this build work well, don't be afraid to experiment with other spells and find out what works best for you. Don't get too close to enemies. While the build is designed to deal high damage quickly, the trade-off is that the character is very fragile. Avoid getting hit by enemies and always prioritize taking them out quickly and one by one if you can. Make sure to prioritize dodge and deflect over blocking when using this build. Remember to use your bow to deal with archers as they usually have very large radiuses of sight and may often trigger other enemies, spoiling your strategy. And lastly, make sure to slot things that increase your fatal strike damage into your equipment as soon as you can in order to make sure that you can one-shot any enemy. That wraps up our Stealth Assassin build. I hope you found this helpful. For those of you wanting to play a stealthy character out here, I think this is the best way to do it. If you have further questions about this build or there are other builds you would like to see, please let us know in the comments below and make sure you bookmark our Wolong Wiki. We have everything on there that you could possibly need for the game.